can, recording to the cloud now. Veronica, it's all yeah. yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for everybody to hang out with us all day. So this is the last part of our webinar. It's number five, how to successfully sell on Amazon with effective product pages. And even if you did not intend to sell on Amazon, the section about product pages would apply to all e-commerce solutions. Um, okay. Let's get started. Well, you now know who I am. I think I've introduced myself like four times, so I'll skip that. Um, all right. We already got some of these questions actually earlier. What are the positives and challenges of selling on Amazon? Um, so the one thing that I would caution everybody, um, there's so much in the press about Amazon. We make a lot of assumptions about Amazon. And we also listen a lot to what other people are saying, which, you know, some people give us really good advice. Um, but you really need to find out for yourself if Amazon is a good fit or not. They actually have tons of tools on their site. So you, so for example, they have calculators on their site, which gives you um, the numbers if you were fulfilling it yourself, your products, or if you have Amazon fulfill. Uh, I'm currently working with a client on Amazon and she made the assumption that it was gonna be so much more expensive if the Amazon warehouse would ship out her products. Come to find out that was not even the case. Um, now, are there other challenges around that? Sure. It's inventory, right? Like, can she even match the inventory? Um, so just make sure that you, that you um, double check what the reality is because Amazon has been making lots of changes to their platform and they're also targeting uh, more small businesses and making it easier for a small business to join them. Um, so I believe that Amazon is a great uh, way to sell your product, no matter what. However, who does the best are businesses with unique products, right? That doesn't mean that the category has to be unique, but products that know how they're different from other products, because you have to stand out. You have a lot of competition um, but a lot of times we can find why we're unique. Um, I've worked with uh, somebody in toys and the toy that this company was producing is very unique within that category. So for her uh, or for this company, it's an amazing opportunity to be on Amazon um, because they're actually selling a lot in that category. The category toys is amazing, right? Um, this hundred million number has probably gone up. And the reason why it's gone up is a lot of people are using Amazon um, to deliver groceries nowadays. So you have an advantage if you're a Prime member. So this number of hundred million Prime customer is probably from like six months ago. So I assume that this has gone up um, by a lot actually. What does that matter? Um, it does matter because prime customers are more likely to purchase on Amazon than anywhere else. So these, this is not even the total number of people that buy on Amazon. So ask yourself, like, do you want your product to be potentially seen by 100 million people? The answer is probably yes. Um, but again, it has to make sense for you. It has to also make sense for you when it comes to pricing. Um, so let's go through this list. Is, is that 100 million in the United States only or is that uh, globally? That's the United States. Okay. Positives, sales, sales, sales. Obviously, you have lots of customer. The reason why Amazon, like the, the reason why we look at Amazon and say like, you know, 
do I want to incur those fees? Like, why is Amazon charging me all this? Because they have a captive audience. They have paid money for people to come and build, like they've built this and people are coming. And so you have a captive audience. You can reach millions of shoppers and you are paying Amazon for that audience. If you think about how much it costs to run ads for somebody to be found, for somebody to find your store, and here you're paying Amazon to get in front of their shoppers. They sell internationally. If international is an option for you, but it's difficult for you to do on your own, they do sell internationally. Um, so you can say where your uh, product is, becomes available. They have a lot of repeat business a lot of returning customers. That's what we're talking about, the prime customers. And it is, e it is easy is not the right word, but it's definitely a great option to acquire new customers that otherwise would have never found you because they buy pretty much only on Amazon. Um, they have a sophisticated back end. When I'm talking about that, it's like, in my experience, like when we were, when I was building e-commerce solutions um, uh, in my former life in gaming, some of those, some of the um, back ends of some of these e-commerce solutions weren't really great. But when you see one that is super sophisticated, where you can get all the analytics we want, you want, all the functionalities you want. Somebody asked earlier about promo codes. Um, you know, anything that you would want, like Amazon most likely will have that option available for you. And it's easy to get started. You can actually be up and running probably like in 30 minutes on Amazon. Um, does it take a lot more to build your product pages? Of course, we're going to talk about that, but it's easy to get started. And they have a lot of tutorials, uh, that you can watch. Again, this is also changing, like their, how they do business changes all the time. They actually drop their Amazon um, fulfillment rates just lately. Um, they have also chat functionalities, I believe. No, hold on, not chat. You can, email, you can email somebody and they will call you back. So they are changing how you, how you interact with them on the small business side. Um, because they have small business teams that will help you answer your question and get everything up and running. What are some of the challenges? Managing your inventory closely. That is um, often the biggest challenge for my small business clients. What's the worst, what is, you know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. You could be on Amazon and your product will sell enormously and you cannot create that inventory. So I had a client, SBDC client, um, they're selling a dried food product that can actually be sold on Amazon through Prime they, do, they, they create their product in small batches. It's a high-end product. Um, and they're in other major stores. Their biggest worry was that what happens when our product is so popular that we can't fulfill? Well, that's a huge problem. It's a huge problem for Amazon and their customers. And Amazon does not take that lightly they will never ever want to sell something that doesn't exist, that cannot be fulfilled. And in my experience, and I have direct experience with selling on Amazon um, as a large publisher, it's hard to come back from that. When they take your product down because you couldn't fulfill it, 
to get that back up, it's like moving mountains because it's their customer. In the end, they own the customer. And owning the customer means is, it's not your customer, it's their customer. However, they, however decisions they make is based on what is best for them. Because they are the ones doing customer service. They are the ones getting a bad reputation. So you have to see it from their, from their side as well. So you need to make sure that you follow their terms to the T. Those terms um, change all the time. You can find those online. There is the seller's hub, um, tons of information in there. Again, it changes all the time. Um, and just be familiar with what you have to do to fulfill all these requirements that they have. Um, if you fulfill, um, and I think I have slides about how to like the difference of the fulfillment. Uh, so there are fulfillment fees, know what they are, because you have to pay those obviously. Um, and free shipping is obviously a major piece of Amazon success. So is this something that you can compete against if you do um, ship yourself, right? If you fulfill your own products, like what would be the shipping cost? Many of us make decisions on Amazon based on shipping. I'm a prime customer. I will not pay for shipping because I'm just used to it, right? So I, I may look at, uh, let's say your product is up there and it's not free shipping. And then there, your competitor's product is there with free shipping. Even if your competitor's product is a little more expensive, I will pro most likely choose that. Most people don't do the math. It's all about what you perceive of the value to be. It's the first it's filter I always turn on. Sense. Yes, when I'm shopping, that's the filter I turn on. Is it Prime? I know, right? So yeah. Prime, in order to be prime, you need to be fulfilling from their Amazon warehouse. That is a huge benefit because those 100 million plus prime customers are going to be your best customers because that's where they shop. Um, so quickly, uh, I'm sure it was about that slide. Um, Annalise uh, put a question in which says compared to using sites like Etsy was the question which I assume means that that's the uh, the comparison for the, the the strengths and challenges is that is that right so um, no not necessarily like I think Amazon stands on its, on its own okay. like Etsy is very much targeted to um, artisan um, products that have been made by that creator right right so handmade products custom products uh, they're in a very different space they're actually very like in some things they're similar right there's a fee um i don't believe they fulfill i think everything is fulfilled um by the the shop itself by the um uh, store owners not by etsy so yeah, I mean, if you have a product that could be sold on both, there's no reason not to do that. Uh, it again, depends on your audience. I wish I could tell you there is somebody who is closely competing with Amazon, but there is not, right? There's walmart.com. Like there are online other online stores. Walmart.com is actually super compli complex to get on. That's what I, that's only also one of the reasons why I don't talk about it. Um, if you are a, um, if you have millions of units of product, then obviously, you know, some of those others are an option. As a small business, um, the negotiations with Walmart are, um, often you have to go through another, a third party. Um, so yeah, so Amazon makes it easy for a small business to get started. That's why they are such a, um, you know, th that's why they're part of this presentation, obviously. So fulfillment options, um, we already talked about fulfilled by Amazon. 
Um, in this case, they manage the storage, the shipping, the customer service, and the returns. And now after you've sat through an entire day of e-commerce, that is a lot of managing of moving pieces that you otherwise would have to manage your own. There is a huge value in that. And Amazon actually does customer service pretty well. Um, there are challenges. You have to get fulfillment ready. That means that your uh, product has to be packaged in a certain way according to their guidelines so that it can be readily shipped from their warehouse. Um, I don't know if you've ever been in any of the logistics centers. I personally love logistics centers. I think they're just incredibly amazing. If you live close to an Amazon logistics center, they actually do give free tours. Well, right now is not the best time to do yeah, it. Exactly. Right? But they usually give free tours. They might even have some 3D renderings or videos online. Um, I've been to some major logistics centers and I was always floored by, like you can't even imagine, it's hard to imagine that when you're not there, when you haven't been there, like all the things that are automatic and how they put the packages together, um, how they sort things, you know, uh, what's most, Popular is at the bottom. What what's hardly ever gets sold is at the top. I mean, it's 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 just amazing, um, um, amazing world. Um, but what Amazon doesn't want is, for example, like in a logistics center. And if you have ever, if you are touring one, you would know, you would understand this, right? Like for example. Um, Amazon has this example that I've seen in one of their, I've been to a few of their um, uh, learning sessions in person. And so uh, I was in one where they were, uh, the person from Amazon was showing us how um, they were working with a small business. That small business was selling dog food. It was artisan dog food. So it was like small batches, um, very custom, high end but their bags were ripping. So when they, um, when Amazon had those bags in the warehouse, they would be ripping. And so you have dog food all over the floor. So obviously there's not only dog food in those logistics center, there's like millions of products. So you definitely don't want to create a mess. At that point, Amazon doesn't even want to fulfill you any longer, right? So, but they actually worked with this um, small business and found a packaging that would allow that dog food to still be shown in the bag, but they had um, they had a carton cardboard frame around the bag. It was actually super cool looking. So it had a cardboard frame because it was always ripping at the ends. Um, I was work. I've been working with a client who um, had has a product that easily breaks. So there's always breakage. So she actually had to figure out how to um, supply these boxes with her products to Amazon to ship out without things breaking. So we actually came up with a solution. Um, if, if she was selling single, um, so you could buy her product in like sets of like 10, 20, right? If it was a single product, it, there was so much breakage that wasn't acceptable for Amazon. But if she packaged it in like tens, and so what she would do is, this is, this is what we have to do, right? She used different packages and would send them to friends through the mail to see how they would end up at the destination. And based on that, she, um, she made decisions on the packaging before she went into the Amazon warehouse. Cause she didn't want to burn any bridges with Amazon. Her, um, she actually has a big following and people are buying her products already online, but she wanted to be thoughtful how to work with Amazon. So the benefits is obviously uh, when you get fulfilled by Amazon that you're eligible for um, Amazon Prime, not you, but your product, obviously, and for two-day shipping. Uh, 
Um, again, prime customers are your prime customers. Um, and the Amazon fees include shipping cost on an expedited schedule. So there is something to it. Do the calculation. If you're not sure what you should do, there is a really easy calculator. I use it for our clients all the time. You put in like on one side, it's like if you fulfilled it and if Amazon fulfilled it. And if you have the inventory and you can make this work, then, um, and it's the same, it's close, you may want to consider fulfilled by Amazon. Also make sure that you understand that Amazon works with everybody on a full return basis. So you don't wanna have so much inventory at the fulfillment center that doesn't get sold. What if you had a, um, something like a product that has an expiration date? You have to think about that too, right? So they can return everything to you at a full return. They're not buying they're a distribution, really. So they are selling on your behalf. So does anybody have any questions about Amazon and fulfilling before we go to the product pages? So there is a, a question more, it's about fulfillment services. Um, and it's, it's kind of, so the question is, is there a third party review of fulfillment centers? They may not be as large as Amazon, but there are other options. And I tried Googling around, oh, and I find yeah. ads for them, but I don't find any third party reviews, articles, and news or anything like that. Any ideas how yeah. we can get that information? Yeah, I would, um, you know, I would ask them for like testimonials or, or references because all these logistics centers obviously work with other customers. So if there's other customers that you can talk to, you might even find that on their websites, right? Like who are their customers? And reach out and it's like, how, you know, are you happy with their service? So what, what don't you like about it? So yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, I've worked with major, you know, product offerings where we moved um, logistics centers, which is not always easy, uh, just to fulfill either faster or it was less expensive or we needed them to do something that another logistics centers couldn't do. You know, what's also an option that a lot of people don't seem to know, um, there are times where manufacturers also offer distribution and dropship services. Yeah. They're usually not the most, um, not the cheapest because that's not their focus. Um, but we've used, um, I've used for clients and uh, when I was in gaming, we used manufacturers that also drop shipped, right? So um, if needed, we could get the first batch out directly to customer at the manufacturer. And then the rest was sent to a logistics center where we would fill back orders, for example. So that's a possibility. I would ask, um, that actually happens like all the time. And we're not, we don't always think about that. So okay. I would start with that, actually. So a question um, about- Even internationally, I work with clients who have international manufacturers who drop ship into the US. Okay. So a question around tracking inventory. Uh, how hard is it to track inventory when Amazon is doing fulfillment? Well, um, if it's in the Amazon warehouse, you, you can track your inventory on Amazon in your seller's account. You see how many were sold, how many are still there. There could be breakage, right? Maybe there was something, you know, that was broken, somebody was returned. So you can, you can see it there. When you fulfill it, you have to manually keep track of this unless you have, if you have an automated system, great. If it can, um, if it can update your Amazon account, great. Like some of the clients that I work with, they actually add their own inventory numbers. Um, so if they're not fulfilling through Amazon into their product, so it says hundred available. So Amazon can sell up to a hundred, right? Um, but then you, you have to make sure that you actually have a hundred to send out. So tracking inventory, unless you have automated it, 
can be super challenging. I think it starts definitely with you and you like, if, do you have an inventory tracking um, system? And if you're not, like, is there something that you can use to track your inventory? I was working with a client, um, he was selling tea and he makes artisan tea combinations. But obviously what he needs for his inventory is certain ingredients. So we looked at, so he, he, when I started with him, he had no inventory system. Then he started one where he, uh, he always know, knew what ingredients he has. He also uh, was able to put in there how fast he could get these ingredients if he ran low. And then what he could or couldn't fulfill. Right? There was some where he had to, where, where he knew within 48 hours he could make this happen, where others, the ingredient wasn't readily available, so he had to put it on back order. Um, you know, there's a lot of small business that are struggling with inventory management. Um, but when you're dealing with Amazon, you need to figure out how to get this right. Okay. A um, couple of questions um, around, uh, Amazon fulfillment. So would, so a simple one, would sales tax on a product be calculated based on the fulfillment center location or based on the customer's address? Um, I think right now the way that Amazon does it, it's on the customer's address. Yeah. So you can see that too, when you're checking out it, you have to put your zip code in there first. Yeah. And like, if you I guess that's it to somebody else, yeah. it might change the sales taxes. So you see that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I guess that's one of the advantages, uh, which is that their engine does all those sales tax calculations and keeps those things up to date, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Um, so someone was saying they've just completed their Amazon page. They were hoping for fulfilled by Amazon, but was told they need a trademark first. He was disappointed, but I'm working on a trademark to get FBA. Really? So I've not heard that. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk here about the brand store, which is actually the trademark piece in Amazon. Okay. So I don't believe you have, like maybe there is a confusion in terminology. Um, I have not heard that yet, that you have to have a trademark to be fulfilled by Amazon. You definitely have to have a trademark to have a brand store on Amazon. So maybe there needs to be some clarification there. Um, but I would be interested if that is really the case, because that would eliminate a lot of products in the Amazon store. Sure. So, um, so yeah, I would clarify that with Amazon if they're talking about fulfillment by Amazon or brand store, which is actually a relatively new feature. And I'm going to talk about that. Okay. And there uh, was one, uh, um, a couple more questions. Uh, is there somewhere they could reference or link we could go for more detailed information on Amazon fulfillment? Is it on, in Amazon itself? Yes. Um, yeah. So if you um, actually, if you just put in Google, Amazon, I'll, 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 I'll search that out and find it. While you're by Amazon, it's like it comes up in Google search, like okay. on the first and, page. And a kind of complimentary question Would you? Um, recommend having a store on eBay as well? So it depends really on your product and your customer. So eBay, um, some of the top categories on eBay is fashion, um, electronics, and auto parts, believe it or not. Those are the three top categories there. Um, you know, eBay hasn't changed much, which is really interesting to me. Yeah. Um, that they're still around is actually amazing. But, you know, they have a very unique way of selling because of the bidding. Um, I have a client, I have a brand new client, and they are, they should be selling on both Amazon and eBay. And I actually think eBay could do better for them than Amazon. I checked, um, I did a check on the products and their competition does really well actually on Amazon and on Facebook and not so much on Amazon. So eBay, Facebook is their number one. So it really depends. Um, I would never say that, you know, eBay can't be more 
successful than Amazon because for some of my clients, that's actually not true. eBay can be more successful. So yeah, if you think your, your customer is buying on eBay, yes. You should be on as many as it makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I think that was... Okay. Um, well, there's one more. Uh, I know it's a response from, from Elizabeth about the brands. She said, brand store for sure, but Amazon seems to link fulfilled by Amazon and brand store. Really? So maybe that's something to a conversation. Yeah, to, yeah another conversation, yeah. Um, All righty. Okay. All right. Uh, top five elements for successful product page. So product pages, the, the, the reason why, I, why they are so important. If you think about websites, and I talked about that earlier. The way that people come to your websites and your e-commerce store and also your Amazon pages may not be through the homepage. That makes every page a landing page. So landing meaning that users who are searching for you land on a certain page. So in essence, every single product page on Amazon or on Shopify, is their own homepage, their own landing page. So the reason why good landing pages, successful uh, product pages show up in Google search, so pay attention to that. Next time you Google a product, most likely 99.9% .9 of the time, there will be an Amazon page that comes up and it's not their homepage. It's a product page. That's why this is so important. And it takes some doing to build a successful product page, but it's so worth it. Um, if you have many products, pick your top sellers and start with those and get it to where you feel like you can compete against all these other successful pages. And then you go from there. Eye-catching visuals. Amazon requires you to have five images. The first one should be one that has a clear background because they want the thumbnail to look. So a thumbnail is that small image that comes up when you search within Amazon for a product. They want that to blend into the to the background of their site. Actually, if you don't do that, they will not show your product in search. True story. They're actually saying that somewhere. So make sure that they have you really good visuals. How often do you make decisions based on, um, make decisions based on the visuals, right? Like we're visual people and I'm just seeing if we have a poll question based on that. Um, visual, visual people, so great product images are key. A lot of people are not even gonna read much of the description. They're gonna, they're gonna um, make a decision based on that, um, on that image. So it's... Um, I've got one about purchase decisions and one about... Um where the people are currently selling. Um, yeah, so let's, um, before I go on, let's do a poll question. Do you currently sell on Amazon? It's launched. Uh, while that's, while people are taking a moment to fill that in, there was a question that says, uh, or it was more of a comment. Uh, there are certain categories that require approval. Is it yeah. difficult to get products approved to sell on Amazon FBA? No. Um, so obviously you have to have your ducks in a row. Um, I just uh, worked with a client on her Amazon uh, presence and she's in toys. Toy category needs approval. So we had to go through um, certain questions, right? Has to make sure that it's, uh, all the compliance rules and regulations are met. Okay. Yeah, but it's not, you know, if 
if your product adheres to all that, that's not difficult. No. Okay, so let's uh, share those results. Uh, no. So, okay. almost half of the people who voted uh, said no, they are not currently selling on Amazon. 15% um, of them said yes. 21% uh, said not yet, which means clearly okay. they're going to. Yes. Um, and finally, uh, not intending uh, was the other 15%. So. Okay. Well, if you're not intending to sell on Amazon, these product pages, what I'm talking about here, also applies to any other e-commerce solution. I'm using Amazon as an example because we have such great examples there. Um, so yeah, so awesome product description. Um, it should be more than just a sentence. Also think about like, even if, you're, if your customers don't necessarily read all this, it comes up in search. Amazon has its own search. So Amazon is like Google search, but it's Amazon search. So you have to figure out like what the keywords are, how are people searching for your product? And just like Google, actually when you go into a search and you would search for a product like yours, Amazon gives you suggestions. And this is what actually, the suggestions are not random. The suggestions are based on what people are actually putting in the search to find products like yours. Um, and the brand store has analytics around that. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So reviews, testimonials, videos, super important. Um, reviews, testimonials, sending people there. Like you are not showing up in Amazon if you don't have reviews or testimonials for your product. That is the reality. So you're competing against all the um, other products that have those testimonials. But there's, there's strategy around that to start to, because you just have to get started somewhere, right? And then go from there and you have to build on that. The more you have people reviewing you, the higher you go, the more sales you have, more of those people are reviewing you. Um, it's momentum, that's what it is. Upselling, cross-selling is interesting, especially if you have multiple products. Uh, you could be cross-selling uh, something that, um, um, you know, it's, it's in that same concept as like, people who purchase this also purchase something else. You can upsell something in addition, right? Like with this product, you should also buy this product. Um, manuals guidance, FAQs, all important. And I actually, this one, um, if you are, if you take the time to look at, um, and I usually have people actually look at on Amazon at these uh, product pages because they're hard to display here on the, on, on the PowerPoint because they actually go, they're, they are super long. And this one, um, I think it has a new make out there. Uh, the Cuisinart, obviously a big brand. Uh, they now have many more thousands of customer reviews. Uh, they, they come up really high. Um, and when you scroll down, like if you're on your phone or you're on your laptop and you can do that uh, while I'm talking, you can just see the wealth of information that they have. And really, this is how you should be building your product page. So when you're in the back end, for the people who are not on Amazon, they have categories. They show you what you need to fill in. And I'm telling you that the majority of the smaller businesses don't take that time. So um, and this is a mistake. You have to fill everything in as extensively as you can. And there's strategy behind that because in essence, this is marketing, right? The marketing messaging writing, the marketing content writing, this is where this comes in. So Veronica, a couple of questions came in around um, the product reviews. So how do you get those reviews? Was it, uh, how do you get Ghana product reviews from your Amazon customers 
when Amazon doesn't want you to contact customers for that purpose? Well, um, <laughs> right. So they don't I get, want you I to. I get them all the time. I get, I get emails probably about a third of the things that I buy asking me what I thought of it. Yes, exactly. So it, it starts with that you have to show and you have to get the first. When you have the first customers, the reviews are actually pretty easy to get, right? Because you get questions sent all the time. Initially, it's uh, much tougher to get reviews. To me, to ask people for reviews that have already purchased it, you don't even have to ask them, right? It's like, oh, we are now on Amazon. We would love to hear your opinion. I, you can do all kinds of stuff to get the first reviews on there. Or, you know, when you sell something, um, you know, to a family, friend, something on your own store, we're also on, you know, you were also on Amazon. I mean, we would love if you give us your opinion. Anything like that. You got to start somewhere. Right. Um, but but is, there, know, is, there not, is there an automatic process whereby uh, if you purchase something, you get encouraged to, 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 to give it a review by oh. Amazon? And how, how do people get involved in that? So there's two different types of reviews on Amazon. One is a verified purchase. So you are giving the review because you have purchased that product on Amazon. And it will actually say verified uh, purchase. Then there was reviews where um, that product was not purchased on Amazon. So it's not a verified purchase. It doesn't give you as much boost in their, um, in their search. But if this is the way to get started for you, get started like that, right? Do they not want you to manage those reviews? They want them to be as um, objective and yeah, but you know that Amazon used to have people write reviews. Yeah. Yeah. They would pay them to write reviews, right? You still see some of them. I'm telling you like the people who give these like amazing long essay reviews, they're getting something for this. So that was uh, one of the questions that said uh, that came in from uh, I think from Amanda uh, ha about reviews. Do you think it's smart to offer something in return? Uh, for example, our email marketing service Conversio will email a customer to ask for a review, and you get a coupon if you do. Um, you know, I would look what Amazon like like what Amazon is saying about that. Um, has it been done? Sure. All the time, right? You go into a restaurant, I mean, not nowadays, but you used to go into a restaurant and they tell you, hey, we're going to give you something free. We're going to give you a free um, milkshake if you write a review on Yelp right now, right? Yelp says you're not supposed to do that. Well, it's done all the time. That doesn't mean that they appreciate it or like it. Now, um, they also archive reviews. So some of these reviews like drop way down. It's an algorithm. If, if, um, if you've now had a review and suddenly you have 50 in one day, Amazon definitely thinks that there's something not right about this. Yeah. So they're going to, they are going to archive some of these reviews. Yelp does this all the time. You know, that's the frustration around Yelp for some of these businesses. Like, why are they archiving all my good reviews? Well, there was an algorithm that said that you were bombarding their app with reviews. So you got to dread a little lightly. Um, but for example, like Google and Facebook say like, go ahead, contact people to review you. So there is, there is a line would you what the risk that you want to take because one thing you don't want that would be the worst if you actually had a customer like if you were giving um a customer some and you don't know that customer and that customer would be telling everybody about it 
you know, they buy reviews, they do like, just remember that your online reputation is super important there. So dread lightly. Okay. Um, all right. The rest of the question, that's it. Keep going. Yeah, I've seen everything. <laughs> I've seen some pretty interesting stuff. So, okay, so brand store. So every small business can also have a brand store. This is a large brand. Most large brands have trademarks. So they own trademarks on their, um, you know, on their product, for their products and their brand and everything. Now there are small businesses that have trademarks and I'm working with some of them. So we have to prove that they have a trademark. There is actually a application that you have to fill out to get that brand store. And um, you would think it's pretty straightforward, but it's actually somewhat painful. And it's not painful because of Amazon. It's actually painful be for, because the way that um, trademarks are given. If anybody here has a trademark on their product, they know the trademark uh, process. And it's very complicated. A lot of people hire lawyers to do trademarks because there are certain things that you can trademark, some things you can't trademark. So I was working with a client who has multiple trademarks on her products. So one is about the graphic, the other one is about the, you know, uh, the concept. There's so, so many, um, so many different trademarks. So you need to figure out what trademark they're looking for. And everything has to be exactly the same. Um, I was working with a client and I was working with her on getting her brand store up and running. So we got rejected for her trademark. The trademarks were all um, active. They were the right trademarks for that. And then we got an email from Amazon that it wasn't matching. And she's like, I don't know what they're doing. I think they're just messing with us. I'm like, no. I mean, they know what they're doing. There's something we're not doing right. So a lot of times it's like, wow, it's, you know, it's Amazon, but it was something actually we didn't do right. So what happened was is in her trademark, she capitalized the name of the product, the entire product was all caps. But then on her product pages on Amazon, they were not all caps. So Amazon was looking at this and said, this trademark is not this product. So we finally figured it out. We had to go in there and change. I mean, it's easier to change a product page than the trademark, obviously. So we went in there, capitalized everything, put it back through, and there we are. We got our brand store up and running. Um, so a brand store is a great opportunity for another almost like internal Amazon website. So you may not know how to find brand stores because they're much more in the background, but they help you in Amazon search. And if people are looking for your brand, for example, right there on the product page, and often you see like distributed by and they click on that, they are going to your brand page at times, if you have a brand page. So it's an amazing opportunity. Um, and also this is relatively new. So we know that Amazon is gonna be putting more effort behind those brand stores. You can have videos there. You can have actually like live showing off your uh, product. You can list all your products. So if you have like 100 different products, this would be the page where your customers could see every single product, obviously. Um, so ideal for a small business with registered trademarks, you can sh uh, show it all in one place, another landing page, and there's free marketing. So it is another page that Amazon, it's free. You don't pay for the brand page. Now, could that change? Maybe. Um, but right now it's, it's free. The analytics. So the one reason that we want the brand page more than anything else is the analytics. It is a huge game changer. 
The sellers analytics are like Google analytics. And we talked about that. It shows some of, some of the basics. The brand store analytics show, show a competitive analysis, keyword search volume. That means you could see um, if the keyword that you're using, how often it's being searched. Wow. You can't see that anywhere else, but in the Amazon brand store, it is, I mean, it's amazing. It shows you actually what the analytics could be showing if you had full access to all information. The reason why Amazon can do that is because they know everything about their own system. It's a proprietary system. They have all the data. Um, user behavior. You can see what your, how your idea customer is like, how, how they're getting to you, how they are, like what others they're like, what other products they're looking at. Think about how much you could find out about your idea customer and what other things that they're per potentially purchasing. Um, specific search term conver uh, conversion. How do certain search terms convert into sales? That's pretty amazing, right? Um, the fluctuation of search terms. For example, seasonal um, search terms. Um, let's say it's the holidays and there are certain search terms people are looking for, Christmas gifts, Hanukkah gifts, uh, whatever that is, or gifts for girls or gifts for Easter or, um, you know, um, uh, you know, book months, gifts, I mean, wh whatever, whatever, birthday gifts. Um, so you can see so much more than you could see in the basic sellers analytics. So that is, I think this is a huge game changer. If you delve more into analytics, you will understand what the power of those are. Like, I mean, for a marketer uh, like us and like me, like this is like game changing. So it's absolutely incredible. So if you can get a brand store, um, you're already on Amazon, you have a trademark, I would get that started for sure. Should you get a trademark just because of that? I'm not sure about that. Um, because not everything can be trademarked. So you should talk to a trademark attorney about that. All right, do we have any questions? There, there's a couple. Um... So someone was saying that they couldn't get the link through the SBDC to work. I've just tested it and it seems to be working fine. Okay. So, um, I'll pop, just in case, I will pop that straight into the, uh, uh, the one that I just used. Uh, I've just posted it in the Yeah. In the can we change the settings on the form? So it, can you test it for us, I'll Alan? Test the form in just a second. So uh, a couple of questions about some code. So one was, how do I get a product code? And which is the authentic website to buy from? How many codes do I need if I'm selling 20 different products? Is that SKUs I think we're talking about? Maybe. So how do you get a product page on Amazon? You have to sign up as a seller. I think, I think it's a product code. I think, I think he's talking really almost like a, um, a SKU. Oh, like on, like on Amazon? Well, if, I, oh, I, if it's like you want like an EAN number or something. An like ASIN, I think she thinks it's called. Oh, okay. Um, good question. Um, I'm not the expert on that, I have to say. Uh, I know that there are some that are requiring numbers and others are not. Mm. Um, so yeah, if you have, yeah, that's a good question. I do not have the answer to that. Um, but I, I had a client, they were asking for a certain code on Amazon and we researched it and she didn't meet that code. Um, so you may, so Amazon may be um, assigning you certain codes, but some actually, some SKUs are actually registered somewhere and they have their unique codes, like books, for example. All books have ISBN numbers. So I think it depends also on your product. Um, but we can find out. You can email me and I can help you find out. Okay. Good question. Uh, and there was a, another question. I think you just really covered that. You said, what did you mean by registered trademark for small business? 
Yes, I mean, a trademark has to be registered, right? So um, it's, so a trademark is, is a trademark is um, registering that this is a, uh, like a unique product. Your brand has to, is gonna be registered. The product is gonna be registered. Uh, that means really that nobody should be able to knock that off exactly. Now, I am not a trademark um, expert by any means. I know that there are some major trademark lawsuits that have been, some have been won and some have been lost. What you can actually trademark. Um, so an attorney can give you much better information about that. Yeah, um, that's, I've, worked, uh, I've worked with trademark attorneys on different products and some of them are super legitimately can be trademarked and others, the attorneys say like, no, that can't be trademarked. Yeah. So yes. there's a know. good site. There's a good uh, USPTO has a good site on there uh, on trademarks. The US uh, Patent and Trademark Office yeah. has got a really good site that I've heard someone talk about before. I'll, I'll throw that in there. Yeah, and it's not it's not necessarily inexpensive either. It also depends if you have an attorney. Uh, sometimes it's also not easy. Like you actually have to make. I have a client who actually had to make arguments why her product should be trademarked. So yeah, so there was tons of attorneys back and forth uh, going to bat for her that her product could be trademarked. She did get the trademark. So it's not automatic by any means. And there's um, one more question, which it may well be the last one we have time for. So it says, I've been hearing a lot about click funnels, both for the service and the product. Are you for this approach? Um, yeah, you know, um, there's many different ways, obviously, to market. So, like, sales funnels and click funnels have been really successful, right? Um, they are all about strategy and how sophisticated they are. I've seen some that don't work at all, and, and my, some of my clients have spent a lot of money on those. Uh, with experts, like if you have somebody um, design this for you and implement for you, ask about their success rate. And you know, marketing is not like, like marketing is not something that, that works like immediately, obviously, but you should know a success rate on, um, you know, before you spent money. I had one client, they spent, I don't know, it was like $10,000 on having that set up. And I think they got zero sales. So yeah, so somebody needs to know what they're doing, obviously. But if it's done properly, sure. Okay. So uh, two more things to do. One is I've got the uh, uh, a place where you can download the slide the slides from today, uh, which was uh, here. So let me just post that in the chat for everybody. Uh, it's a Dropbox download, so you should just be able to click on that and it'll uh, download those links, uh, that slide for the, the PDF with all the slides on it for you. And then I've just retested the, uh, the form um, that uh, Veronica had and now it appears to let us actually use it. Yay, my team came through. We Yay, aren't they a fabulous team? <laughs> so uh, let me post that in here as well. So uh, you should be able to get to that one as well. Um, alrighty. So um, in terms of follow up, we will um, send out a link to everyone who was registered for and attended any of these sessions uh, with a link to the recordings, the five set, the five recordings that we've made uh, on this. So any of the ones you missed, you'll be able to see. Uh, I'll be sending Veronica a list of the unanswered questions from session four. One, one of the sessions, I can't remember which one it was. One of the sessions there was unanswered questions, I'll, I'll send her the list of, the list of those. Uh, and um, she could respond uh, uh, to those, to the individuals who, who posed those questions. Yeah, and just a quick, um, just to reiterate what we said earlier, if you have any questions for me, you can email me. You can email me starting now, right?
but you need to become also an SPDC client. You can do this parallel. Yeah. There was a link.